by the grace that even as we share in your word, we want to pray that Heavenly Father, you may speak to us in a voice that we can understand to the glory and honor of your name. I avail myself to be used as a vessel that Heavenly Father, you may open the hearts of these men and women that are waiting on me for the glory and for the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We may be seated <coughs> in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Apana sitaki ha, sita, uh, salimia mimi. Hello. Hello. Praise be to God. I am born again. Uh, Christ is king in my soul. My name is Daniel Muhea Wagadogo Najoki Naluse. And I am very delighted to be together with us as we share God's word. And I am humbled um, for this opportunity through the Archdeacon of this church and of this uh, Archdeaconry, the Venerable Solomon, together with the priests, Reverend Kate and Reverend Sam, and all the pastoral team for according me this opportunity to come and share the word of God with us. I am a member of this church. Uh, there is still some space. Uh, I sit on the, on the uh, yes, on the, the, is it the fourth? Yes, the fourth row. But I am gracious to God because he has given me an opportunity to serve. And therefore, I am serving at uh, ACK, Gatuanyaga Parish. And um, they didn't send me with greetings. But if I told them I was coming here, they would have sent me with greetings. Would you have received? Have you mastered my choice of words? Would you? Now I am wondering... Do you want me that when I go back there, I, I go and cheat them that you sent me with greetings? So do you send me with greetings? So on Sunday, at, I'll be at St. Stephen's Gatuanyaga, and I will take the greetings from SEK, St. Matthew's, Juja. My wife is also a member of this church, but unfortunately today, she's not together with us, but um, receive the greetings from my family. Mmezipokea? Apana, atupokea isalamu hivyo kama tumeboeka, tunagonga kakofi moja? Asante sanam. I was thinking when I was given this opportunity to come in and share. Because this year, within our church and within the Diocese of Thika, we are talking about presenting everyone perfect in Christ Jesus. I want you to listen to those words. Not presenting men. Not presenting those who have money. Not presenting those who are educated. Not presenting some people. But presenting everyone perfect in Christ Jesus. And I know we have been following in on what we have been learning across the previous months. And therefore, whatever I am sharing with us today, I am building up on the foundation that has already been laid and more so at the beginning of this month of September when we are talking about justice. And I know when I talk about justice, it is not a very new concept because I know some of us today, when you look in at the scenarios that have been running around within our nation, Kenya, especially in the last few months, people were wondering whether is there justice that prevails in this country. As a matter of fact, when we talk about the recent uh, advent of the, 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 the term Gen, Gen Z, but when we think about justice, probably we are thinking about hakietu uh, hakietu thing that we have been seeing on our TVs and on the media. But today, building up on the foundation that was laid by the Reverend Kate, at the, uh, I think on 8th, when she, uh, she talked about the God of justice. And then last Sunday when the Reverend Sam spoke about social justice or justice to the other people. Today I want us to talk about justice to God. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ninaona kuna watu wananiangalia wanaanza kufikiria sasa utapatia Mungu haki gani and he is the owner of justice and therefore I want us to speak about justice as true worship to God justice as true worship to God and I have two questions that I want you to place at the back of your mind so that at the end of this service you will ask yourself whether you have another better answer of these questions. And the first question I want us to ask ourselves as we think about worship in truth and in spirit as justice to God is how does God think about himself? I know that's a philosophical question. How does God... So if today I talk about Maureen, there is a way I see her, but there is a way 
that she herself, if there is such a word or such a term, she knows herself from within. So how is the true nature of God? And the second question is how does God think about worship? Because sometimes when we talk about worship, there are people who think that worship is just coming and gathering in on a Sunday like today we are gathered. There are people who actually think that uh, worship is a preacher standing on the pulpit. As a matter of fact, there are some maybe who think it is about personal devotion. In fact, to the words, there are some who even think that worship is an issue of about praise and worship. Hallelujah. But today as we think about worship, I want us to consider some words that are in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 23. Where the Lord instructs us that whatever our hands find to do, we work at it with all our strength as though we are working unto God and not to men. Hallelujah. In other words, what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 is that as you work, as you preach, as you cook food for your husband, as you aisle on the clothes, as you uh, fagi around the streets and as you go your daily business, do it as though it is worship to God. Hallelujah. Because as a matter of fact, it is worship. Worship is not just gathering in here on Sunday and then the rest of the week we are not doing everything that we are doing as worship. Your daily activities from Monday to Saturday, they should be acts of true worship to God. Hallelujah. And I have connected this with some words that are written, if you could give us in the book of Jeremiah chapter, uh, chapter 9 verses, 20, uh, chap uh, verses 24. Yes, Jeremiah uh, chapter 9 verses 24. 23 and 24, let's read 23. Uh, no, in chapter 9, chapter 9 verses 23 and 24. This is what the Bible says. In Jeremiah chapter 9. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom. Or the strong man boast in his strength. Or the rich man boast of his riches. And then verse 24. But let him who boasts boast about this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice and righteousness on earth. For in this I delight. Hallelujah. That. If you would pick the last, uh, the last portion, the last phrase, that he exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in this I delight, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. Our worship is meant to bring us each and every moment closer to becoming like God. And we have realized that God delights in kindness, he delights in justice, and he delights in righteousness. And therefore, when we talk about worshiping God, we can only worship God in justice and righteousness. So you cannot talk about worship without talking about righteousness. Hallelujah. And therefore, as we reflect on how we can offer True worship to God, like we read in the book of, uh, in, in the book of John chapter 4, uh, uh, verses 20 to 26, that a time is coming, and that time is already here with us, when true worshipers, hallelujah, when true worshipers will worship the God, our Father, in truth and in spirit. And I have connected as I conclude, because I was given very few minutes as I conclude, I have connected this message of true worship as our justice to God with a message that we always know in the book of Romans chapter 1, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 12 verses 1 all the way to 5. And that is where I will draw my conclusions today so that we will ask ourselves whether our day-to-day -day worship, I, is it matching up with the standard that the Lord has given to us? If we will read so that you don't say that I didn't read the Bible. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, if you, if you realize, because here I know they are teachers, they are teachers of English, when you, when you have the, the use of the word therefore, it means that there is some statement there before that you need to see so that you can connect now to this message. Hallelujah. So I give you as an assignment that when you go, go and read Romans chapter 10 and chapter 11 so that you can understand why the word of God says therefore. Hallelujah. So therefore... I urge you, men and women, brothers and sisters of Ezekiel and Matthew's Judah, that in view of God's mercy, that you will offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. 
chap verses 2 that do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will chapter verses 3 it says uh, for by the grace given me I say to every one of you that do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with job, uh, sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given unto you. Hallelujah. And then verses 4, it says that just as each one of us has one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function. Verses 5 says, so in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belong to all others. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And this is where I want us to conclude and derive our teaching today on how we can offer our worship, our true worship to God as our justice to God. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And the first thing that I see as our measure of justice as true worship to God is in verses 1 of Romans chapter 12 verses 1. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, that in view of God's masses, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. And I know all of us, we participated in the song that was being led here by praise and worship, where we were lifting our hands and we were saying, accept this living sacrifice. It is not a goat that we have brought at the altar. It is not our money. Our money is good because it will help in the development of the church and running the operations of the church. But the most important thing that God is looking from you and from me is that we must offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Before we bring our money, before we bring our talents, before we bring our education in the worship of God, we must first of all bring our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Because true worship, when the Bible says that uh, we, we become true worshippers, we will worship in truth and in spirit, it requires sincerity. Kwa sababu wezi didaganya, you cannot cheat yourself and you cannot cheat God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I know my heart. I know where I slept yesterday night. I know where I will go after this. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I actually know even what I did yesterday. Kwa hivyo, kama niliingia kwa matope jana, kama niliingia kwa giza jana, hata nikuje niweze kuinua mikono yangu, God is looking for a sincere and an honest worship from the depths of our hearts. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And that is why sometimes I keep on telling us that uh, worship is not how people, other people will perceive. Hallelujah. In fact, sometimes you can lead nicely. Uh, I, I like uh, pointing to praise and worship because my wife is a praise and worshiper. Sometimes you can lead nicely in praise and worship and people will tell you, oh, you know, today you led us in a wonderful way. But the worship that you led us did not reach to the grace of God. Let us endeavor that the worship that we... Whether it is worship in terms of being an usher, in terms of being a choir member, in terms of being an elder of the church, in terms of being a lay leader, let your worship, hallelujah, be from a sincere and a, an honest heart. Hallelujah. As I conclude that point, there is a story I want you to go and consider of a lady called Rebecca. Munajua Rebecca abaya liorewa na Isaac. So this girl is living in the wilderness and the work that she knew was to take camels out there to, to, to do that thing, to, 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 what is it? To drink water. And therefore, as she was taking her, her father's camels out there, the only two men that she knew was the father and the brother. But she believed that one day, God will bless her with her own, her own husband. Na hakuna mwanaume anajua kazi yake ni kuchukua ngamia, anazipereka kwa kisima, Zinakunywa maji, and then she goes back. Bwana Yesu asiviwe. But I want you to realize something. That one day she comes in at the well and she's uh, watering the camels. And then an old man appears there. Maybe the age of the father. And I am very sure Rebecca didn't think that that man would become the husband. Bwana asiviwe. I am very sure haku wameona huyo ni potential. But because she wanted to offer herself, akajitoa, akaambia huyo muzee, mimi nataka kusaidia kufanya nini? Kunyuesha. Yeah, ni kunyui, kunyui Kunyuesha. Hallelujah. 
and as she, uh, she supported that old man to water her camels, that is how she ended up finding a husband. True worship is not what I am getting from here. It is not what I am getting after I worship God. But it is God. I have presented myself as a living sacrifice. Just accept me the way I am. We need to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. We said, Three things that will match up, that will be a benchmark as to whether our worship is pleasing and it is acceptable to God as our justice to God. The second thing we have said, therefore, I urge you, brethren, in view of God's masses, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, because this is your spiritual act of worship. And then chapter, verses 2 says, do not conform to the pattern, do not conform any longer. And therefore, the word of God appreciates that previously before today, we were conforming. Ah, I'm just here because I'm going to say my amen. It is appreciating that there was some conformation there before. But today, because we have been reminded, do not conform any longer. So your matchup and your benchmark is not the men and women of Chama. It is not the people who are in your neighborhood. It is not the people in your estate. Hallelujah. The Bible says that be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Hallelujah. And therefore, when we are thinking about true worship, the first thing is we present ourselves. We offer ourselves to God. And then the second thing is that after we have offered ourselves, because God will begin with us the way we come. Hallelujah. God does not expect that we will just come in and pop like a switch. We become there is light. Hallelujah. He will continue to work on us because we are working in progress. Every one of us here is being molded each and every new day to become like Christ. Hallelujah. So when he tells us that do not conform any longer, but be ye transformed so that your mind becomes like a mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And therefore, transformation is making a decision that beginning today, I will no longer go there. That company that I was speaking that is dragging me in mud and darkness, I will no longer keep it. Hallelujah. I want you to go and think about the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, after kufikiria ile mambo mambo mingi mingi, I am very sure if he asked his neighbors and wange muambia, wewe ukirudi huko utanyoroshwa na huyo dugu yako mwenye uliacha. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And there could be things that could threaten us and sometimes we think we do not want to be transformed. But today, the Lord our God is asking us that we offer true worship and justice to him through being transformed by the renewal of our minds. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Our action, they should reflect the righteousness of God. Our actions, when we are transformed, they should reflect somebody who is transformed. You cannot keep on saying, oh, uh, you, you know, there are people who think about this, 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 this um, phrase that we make in our lethargy. As it was, uh, or, uh, I, I know it in Kikuyu. Uh, uh, God does not expect us to remain static the way we were yesterday. He wants us to change every new day because we are work in progress. Hallelujah. And therefore, beginning today, may the Lord charge us, may the Lord challenge our hearts, our minds, and our souls that we will endeavor to change something, especially in our worship. So that when we come into Asha, we don't Asha just like, ah, leo ni mimi nilikuwa ni meadikwa kwa karatasi. You don't just come in and do work kazi ya mungu ni kana kwamba wacha tu ni tika box. Hallelujah. We must worship God. We must offer our bodies in worship of God in truth and in spirit. And the third thing. We said there are three things which will be benchmark set to whether we are worshiping God our Father in truth and in spirit as our justice to God. And we say that the first thing is that we offer ourselves. The second thing we have said is that we be transformed. And the third thing is in verses 3. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, 
Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with job, sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given to you. Hallelujah. And therefore, as we offer our worship to God, let us offer our worship to God in humility. Hallelujah. Ah, here I'm just here. We must offer our worship to God in humility without exalting ourselves because when God has gifted us with different gifts to worship him, there is no greater gift than the other. The choir is not greater than the praise and worship. The praise and worship is not greater than the ushers. Hallelujah. The church elder is not greater than the, than, than, than the, than the lay leader. We are all equal and we are all serving one God. As a matter of fact, even when we come to a Sunday worship service, there is no portion that is more important than the other. You know, sometimes, sometimes we, we have been uh, oriented to think that the preaching is like the most important thing. I have realized that even the songs that were sung today by the choir, the songs that were being sung by the praise and worship, they were all preparing us for the service that we are making right now. Bana Yesu asifiwe. Bana Yesu asifiwe. So when God has gifted you a ministry, whether it is in church, whether it is at home, whether it is in the neighborhood, whether it is in your place of work, offer that worship in humility. As I conclude, sasa ya muisho kabisa, there is a story that we always keep on referring to. There is this guy called Moses. There is Ur. There is Aaron. And there is fight that is going outside there. And they had to, to lift the hands of Moses. The, the hands of Moses had to, to stay up so that when they went down, then the armies were losing, were losing the battle. And most of the times we think that maybe Moses was the most important. Sometimes we may think even these people who are supporting his hands were the most important. But do you know that there was a stone, Kahiga? There was a stone on whom, on which Moses sat so that Mikono yake waweze kufanya nini? Waweze kumushikiria. I know in our worship and in our ministry, there are many stones. Kwena tohigato ige, woko zine wakani thawa St. Matthews. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. And maybe they might never be recognized, but they are important and they are critical in the worship that the Lord, our God, has called us into. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. The Lord is reminding us today that the first thing we have to do is to offer ourselves to him. Hallelujah. Before we offer our money, before we offer anything that he has given us, let us offer ourselves. The second thing is that after we have presented ourselves, we need to be transformed so that our mind looks like the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And the third thing is that when the Lord has accorded us an opportunity to serve him and to minister wherever he has given to us, let us minister, let us serve in humility. Without looking down on who, who is more educated than me, who does what like who. But most importantly, do you know you cannot offer yourself before you have a communion with this God? Would there be anyone here who wants to say today, I want to give my life to this Jesus so that even as I offer my bodies, even as I offer my money, even as I offer that which he has given me, he will have transformed my mind. Is there somebody who is looking for transformation today? Kuna mutu ambaye yuko hapa. Is there anyone? Let us pray. God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you because you have reminded us today that you want us to offer justice unto you through worship in truth and in spirit. God, our Father, even as we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, we want to pray that, Lord Almighty, you will help us, that each and every day of our lives, we will be able to understand that you have called us so that we worship you. Heavenly Father, you created us so that we worship you. God, our Father, we want to call on you even as we pray. That as we come to you, you may transform our minds. That we will no longer conform to the patterns and the standards that have been set by the world. But we will be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And the Heavenly Father, when you give us an opportunity to serve you, we will serve you in humility. Lord, without looking down on those people who might appear by the standards of men that they are downtrodden. By Heavenly Father, we will be able to offer justice to you even as we offer justice to the society. Lord, be together with us and take our hearts and let them be consecrated to you. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amazing grace.